Hello, I'm Austin Meyer. I'd like to give you a quick overview of Xavion. Xavion is an iPad app that I wrote to back up as much stuff as it possibly can in the airplane in flight. First of all, it's obviously a synthetic vision system. It backs up your attitude, uh, airspeed, altitude, and as well a map showing where you are. So it's a full synthetic vision system backup in case the instruments in your aircraft fail. Since I released the app, we've already had two people have instrument failures and instrument conditions and use Xavion flight normally. As well, Xavion plans power off instrument approaches so that if the engine quits at any point in flight, you can simply follow the hoops uh, that are plotted by Xavion to arrive down at the runway to safe landing. So it backs up your instruments, all of your instruments just about, and in a sense it kind of sort of backs up your engine because it safe path down to the ground if after an engine failure. As well, it uses ADSB receivers such as the Sage Tech Clarity and the uh, eye level to get in ADSB weather. And the ADSB weather is visible uh, where you go to the map and make a selection for what type of weather you like to see. Simple pinch zoom, you can see, for example, uh, next red weather, winds aloft, and if you simply touch an airport, you can get METARs, <laughs> so you can get weather at the airport as well. So, using Xavion, you have backup synthetic vision, uh, power off guidance down to the ground in the event of an engine failure, and ADSB weather, all displayed to give you weather situational awareness as well. So, why don't we go on up and do a quick power off approach and see if Xavion can guide to the ground safely. Camden traffic, Columbia 428 X-ray, taking 2-4 Camden. One of the nice little things that Xavion does is it estimates your takeoff distance. Once you've entered the weather manually that you get from uh, ATIS or gotten weather update from an ADSB receiver, Xavion knows the winds, temperature, and barometric pressure, and based on that it estimates your takeoff distance based on that and your previous takeoffs. So Xavion thinks that at today's weight and today's weather, we should take about 2,300 feet to get in there. This runway that we're taxiing onto is about 5,000 feet long, and so sure enough, as we line up for takeoff, it's 220% runway to get to 50 feet tall. In other words, we know that we can safely take off on this runway, and uh, we have a 220% of the runway we need. If we were to ever taxi onto the wrong runway, <laughs> or taxi onto the runway in the wrong direction at an intersection departure, or perhaps just be too hot, high, and heavy to get off the ground and the runway available, this number would obviously indicate closer to 100%, and it would turn yellow or red, depending on how close you're cutting it, and could very well present, prevent an accident by showing you're, you're about to take off on the wrong runway. All right, let's do a takeoff. Okay, here we are at 7,500 feet, and let's take a look at the way Xavion works with the new ADSB receivers, such as the Sage Tech Clarity that we have now. It also works with the I-Level ADSB receiver as well. So, let's go, for example, to pre-flight weather. And what we see here is all the weather that is currently being received by the Sage Tech Clarity. You can see it's getting METARs, traffic, more METARs. Pretty soon some winds aloft will come in, some next bad weather will come in. And, oh, there's some winds. So we get wind, METAR, traffic, uh, and next rad weather all coming in from this little guy here, this little Sage Tech Clarity. And uh, the eye level will also do the same thing. So let's see how this actually looks on the map. If we go back to the map and we go to, say, preferences, let's turn on, for example, next rad, for example. Now we're going to go look at our map, zoom out a bit, just pinch zoom, the way maps should work in my opinion, and you can see the, uh, the next rad weather in the general vicinity of the state of South Carolina. If you don't have an ADSB receiver, this will still work. We just don't get next rad weather, that's all. And you can see some fronts up here. And the gray area is an area we simply have not received from the ADSB transmitters yet. They're clearly simply not sending the areas where there isn't any weather because that's a lower priority. As well, we're getting our traffic reports so we can see some airplanes around the, the vicinity. And uh, we can look at, say, winds aloft. Let's start look at the winds at, say, 6,000 feet. And um, you can see the winds aloft here, 13 knots going that way, temperature 13C. So we got winds aloft, next rad. Another thing we can do that I think is kind of cool is look at the freezing level. Um, ADSB does not actually broadcast freezing level right now, but it broadcasts the temperatures aloft. <laughs> so what Xavion does is simply figures out where the freezing level must be based on the temperatures aloft that it gets. 
and we can see the, t the freezing level here is around 14,000, maybe 14,300 feet. So we get freezing level, winds aloft, and uh, next rad. We can look at the winds at, say, 9,000 feet. And then we can see the winds at, say, 9,000 feet or 7 knots, temperature 9C. Now, based on the winds aloft, uh, Xavion will do fine-tune adjustments on the hoops that it takes down to the runway in the event of power loss. Right now, in the event that we lose power, it thinks that we should make right-hand traffic. Oh, okay, and now some circling uh, 360s down to Camden. And it's constantly changing its mind about what's the perfect approach to give you perfect energy management down to Camden. And you can see the little hoops on the map here, and you can see the hoops here on the, uh, the primary display. And if we simply fly through the hoops, it'll take us right down to the runway smoothly. So everything is going to be completely controlled if we lose power at any moment. And those hoops are adjusted for the winds. Okay. And the, the next thing we want to look at is getting weather for individual airports. ADSB transmitters broadcast METARs for all of the airports that report METARs. So, for example, we're flying along, and we can see our glide range here as the area that's visible on the map, and we can see our hoops are available to take us down to Camden. If we want to know what the weather is at Camden, all we do is touch the airport to select it, and then touch the little name of the airport in the upper left. And there you go, a METAR appears. Wind 210 at 7 knots, visibility 10, clouds 2800, temperature 29, dew point 22, barometric pressure 3016. So, just touch an airport to get its weather. This is the way aviation interfaces should be designed, I think, and that's what we have here. Touch an airport, see the weather. That's all there is to it. All right, so here we are simply flying along at 7,500 feet at the moment, and um, we see our glide range available on Xavion. As well, we see our path to Camden. If the engine were to quit right at this moment, this is the path we'd follow to Camden. As well, we see our hoops on the primary flight display. If the engine fails, then we simply follow these hoops right on down to Camden. And we can see that our energy is good or just a little on the high side. So we'll pop out some speed brakes or flaps, maybe slip the airplane to get our energy meter right down to the middle. Okay, which it is now because Xavion just added a little 360 to the energy. So as you see, as we fly along, Xavion is constantly updating the path that we'll take down to the airport to keep the energy meter right in the center. That way, if the engine fails, all we do is aim through the hoops and we'll arrive at the runway with the proper energy. So Xavion is backing up both our instrument panel and our engine right now since we have a complete synthetic vision system in the event of instrument loss and we have a path down to the ground in the event of power loss. This is the type of backup that is nice to have in flight. Okay, as we're flying along, we can also go back to the pre-flight weather screen and see that weather is constantly coming in from the transmitter, the uh, ADSB receiver and transmitter here. And we can go to pre-flight, or excuse me, preferences, and we can look at next rad, zoom out, and see there is some next rad activity, but it's far away from us. We can look at the winds at, say, 6,000 feet. There's the winds at 6,000 feet, and temperatures aloft as well. We could look at the freezing level, see the freezing level is at 13,600 feet, and uh, we can also see traffic. There are airplanes in the area. So, we get NEXRAD weather, winds aloft, freezing level, and traffic all for free, thanks to this little Sage Tech Clarity, or, if you would like, an eye level. And the hoops that uh, guide us down to the runway in the event of engine failure are based on the winds that are received from the Sage Tech Clarity ADSB receiver. If you don't have an, uh, an ADSB receiver, then you simply, in the pre-flight, enter the winds manually. When you enter the winds manually, those are the winds that Xavion will use to get you down to the runway. So the system will work without an ADSB receiver, but you just have to enter the winds manually in that case. Better to have a receiver so you can get the next rad, the traffic, the winds aloft, the freezing level all automatically updated. Okay, here's a cool new little feature in Xavion that I don't think anyone's ever seen before. And what it is, it's the available gliding attitude of the aircraft. Notice the little shark's teeth here on the display. What we can glide to is anything that's between shark's teeth. In other words, our shallowest glide is the upper shark's teeth. 
our steepest glide is the lower shark's teeth. Anything between there is what we can glide to. So, any airport or runway or any other target that appears between those teeth, that's something we can make it to without power. And this is an idea that was thought of by someone that actually worked on the F-22 avionics program and that I programmed into Xavion. I've never heard of any other avionics showing this before, but now with Xavion, you can see what you can glide to. If an airport is inside of those little teeth, you can probably make it there without power. And yes, the teeth are corrected for wind, either wind received from the ADS-B receiver or entered manually by you if you don't have an ADS-B receiver. So, shark's teeth, a new way to look at where you can glide to in the event of power loss. All right, how about another cool little feature? Let's go to Prefs, Map, VFR Airports. Now, when we zoom out, any airport that is green is VFR. Any airport that's yellow is marginal VFR. Any airport that's red is IFR. So, if you're flying along and the weather is starting to tighten around you as it gets worse, you can simply go to VFR Airports Map in Xavion and know that if you go for a green airport, you'll get VFR conditions. A yellow airport will give you marginal conditions. A red will be low IFR conditions. An orange will be kind of uh, high IFR conditions, just a little bit below marginal VFR. So at a glance, you can see what airports you can go to if you ever start to get behind the airplane as the weather builds up around you. This is kind of nice. In the weather screen here, we can see what the airports are VFR or IFR for rapid escape to VFR airports. We can look at the freezing level, we can look at the winds aloft, and we can look at NEXRAD. This is all weather that's freely available from the ADSB receiver, and it's uh, information that can rapidly help you make decisions if you're ever in a pinch about what airport to go to. Okay, so let's say we're meandering along across the sky, and then all of a sudden the engine fails and then bring the power back, pop the speed brakes, and uh, just imagine we've had a complete engine failure here. I'm going in and hit the panic button. Let's say I want runway 24 at Camden. Just touch runway 24. And uh, the hoops are going to guide us in. So, all we do now is follow these hoops. I don't see Camden. There's a bunch of clouds down there. I don't really see where the airport is. But if I keep the airplane inside of these hoops, we're going to wind up right at the desired runway. Let's touch the label. Wind 210 at 7, visibility 10, clouds 2,800 view, temperature 29er, barrier 3016. I can see the weather just by touching it. No desperate fumbling around to try to figure out what to do next. Just touch the, the uh, airport to get the weather and aim the little airplane in the little pink line. In the hoops, and we're going to get right there. I've got the power back to just about idle, carrying just a little bit of power to keep the engine warm since it's a turbocharged engine, and I'm carrying speed brakes. So with the speed brakes out and just a little bit of power, the airplane's behaving the same as it would with no power at all. We're just keeping the engine warm, that's all. And all you do is just keep the little airplane on the little magenta line I threw those hoops. A little bit. Oh, great. And so, here we go on our approach. Just aim through the hoops. You can see our little velocity vector is aiming through our hoops. You can see the shark's teeth, which indicate where we can glide. It's right in the middle of the hoops. So, down the hoops we go, right to the airport. Nothing to it. Step around this cloud to maintain VFR. Or not. We just followed the hoops right down to the airport as can be. And when we arrive at the airport, we'll be right on the right energy for landing.
Guys, you see we're just following the hoops right on down. A bit of turbulence here that we can't handle. Just go right through those hoops. And you can see the runway right at the end of the hoops. And you can see the runways right between the shark's teeth, which is the available area that we can glide. 